One of the most confusing and common questions asked by new aspiring creators is, what sublimation printer should I get? Research into the issue doesn't help because there's not a central resource that tells you exactly what works and what doesn't. If you don't do your research, you could end up with an Epson ET8500. But all jokes aside, today we're going to try to bridge that knowledge gap. We've composed several spreadsheets and came up with what we consider our top printers that work for dye sublimation. We spent hours upon hours inputting data into these spreadsheets and browsing websites for all the details. In this video, we're going to give you a detailed summary of our findings and take you straight to the results. I'll try to go into detail what makes each printer good or bad and explain why they may or may not work in your situation. All right, guys, let's start out with the Epson Workforce, uh, the 2830 printer. Uh, this is the little small all-in-one printer that does 8.5 by 14-inch paper. Um, you would need to get cartridges. Probably chipless firmware would be much better, and also ink to convert it over. Uh, it, it'll take you a little time. It's not as easy as like an EcoTank, but overall, it'll still be a pretty easy conversion. You'll have a cheap printer for $99 plus the cost of ink, cartridges, and the chipless firmware should be up and running for around $200 for something that'll do um, eight and a half by 14 inch paper reliably. So that's our that's our first and cheapest option. Uh, the next option is the 2860. Basically the same thing, just uh, if you can't find the 2830 in stock, you can get this. It's $50 more, so that's it doesn't make sense to buy this over the 2830 because it doesn't do anything different. It literally does the same thing, um, just $50 more. Okay, the next one that we're going to look at, which is a major step up, is the uh, the EcoTank, the ET2800. Uh, and this is one of the uh, the all-in-one super printers. And what you do is you just dump the ink directly into those tanks right there. And they make it super easy. And you can find these on sale for $199. And overall, they're a good printer if you if you don't need to do anything large, if 8.5 by 14 is the biggest you'll do. They're a more than adequate printer. All right, next up, we have the, uh, the 7710s. And 7720 printer. Um, good luck finding these in stock. You'll you'll have to be really diligent when you search. But these are an amazing printer because they do 11 by 17, 13 by 19, 8 and a half by 11, 8 and a half by 14, and a little bit of everything. That I mean, they will literally do everything. And you can sometimes find them in a re, uh, refurbs for like 199. And then you're out 300. dollars You're out of uh, printer that can print 13 by 19 and do it pretty well and they they make a uh, chipless firmware and all that to give it pretty easy printing once you get it converted um, these are getting really hard to find because they're discontinued but i mean if, if you can happen to find one of these they're they're an amazing printer for the uh for the value all right guys next up we have the xp 15000 Th this is a weird one um not a lot's known about the printer but you can convert it and it, they do have a chipless firmware so it's as easy as any other printer you just put the uh put the cartridges in there and, and go at it and they it does up to a 13 by 19 for 349 and you can see they're in stock so if you do a little bit of work uh after the chipless firmware after the update and everything you can have a 13 by 19 printer for around 400 dollars so th this is a really good way to do it, and it, um, it's a newer Wi-Fi printer and everything. So I mean, you see everything it does there. It's 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 pretty good, pretty good value for the price. Next up, we have something really interesting that I just kind of noticed. Um, not a lot's known about this printer. It's the it's the Workforce, the uh, the seventy three ten series, um, and this will actually do a. Uh, 13 by 19 they're in stock almost everywhere and they're just a little bit over $200 now unfortunately there is a major downside to these printers and that's the fact that you have to uh, even if you get refillable cartridges the chips do, there's not a chipless firmware and the chips do not are not able to be reset each one has like an individual serial number or something on them there's some kind of weird shenanigans going on with it so you have to technically replace the chips with epson chips or new chips after every ink change which really which makes the uh the the, the operation cost on one of these printers go up drastically but honestly if you're somebody that doesn't use a printer very often um if, if you're not running it every single day it might make sense to go this route but I just wanted to let you know before you dove into it, thinking it's something that it's not, you will have to change the chips and they are not cheap. It's about, uh, it, it about doubles your ink cost to be totally honest. And that's the same with the, uh, the 7310, um, the 7840 and also the 7820 and see the 7820 is even a little, um, a little cheaper than the 7840, but it's still about $80 higher than the, uh, 
the 73T. But that's the case with all the uh, the newer Epson stuff. They all have that chip that you have to uh, actually re replace the whole, let's see, the little chip that's on the cartridge. But there are sources for these individual chips. Like, I found them on, uh, geez, I, I forgot where it was. You can find them for four or five bucks a piece. If you just know where to look, I'm still trying to find a reputable source for them. Um, and I may even offer those at, at a certain time. And it's not a bad way to go, um, but it still adds $50 for every ink fill-up that you do, which really sucks. Next up is one of the favorites. It's the EcoTank, the 7750. And, and, and this little guy does everything but 13 by 19. It does 11 by 17 paper, um, and it's an EcoTank. And it includes the fifth color. I think it's like the photo gray that it does. Um, so you do have to have a, a different color, an extra color on there, uh, which is kind of a pain in the butt. However, they are in stock. Almost, I've seen them everywhere for five forty nine, which isn't a terrible price for an eleven by seventeen sublimation printer. Um, but like I said, you just have to find it in stock, and you have to just uh, dump the sublimation ink in there, and you'll be ready to go. Um, if you want something that's a small upgrade from that, um, if you can find one, the uh, the unicorn of sublimation is the Epson EcoTank uh, ET fifteen thousand. And this guy does pretty much everything. It's only four color, but that's just fine. That's a little bit cheaper on ink. A little less ink you have to work with. Um, and it actually, they're, it, it's wrong what it says. It actually will do 13 by 19. All right, I just had to Google it, and it definitely does print a 13 by 19. As you can see right here on Epson's official website. So Office Depot's site is incorrect, but that's okay. Um, and you have to you have to just keep looking and keep pounding on these, and you will eventually find you one. They they do make them. They're sometimes in stock, and it's this is the perfect sublimation printer. If you can, if if a thirteen by nineteen will work for you, you don't need anything bigger. Um, it does pretty much everything you'll ever want to do, um, up to when you start needing like a dedicated twenty four inch plus printer. Again, that's the Epson EcoTank ET fifteen thousand that you're looking for. All right, guys, similar to the ET15000 is the Epson EcoTank uh, 8550, which is not to be confused with the 8500, which is a terrible printer. Um, but this one also does 13 by 19, and it's it's a six-color printer, so you'll have to have uh, those extra inks, which is available. Uh, Cosmos Ink has those inks. That's, that's not a problem at all. And they are a bit on the expensive side at $699, um, but you, you can actually find these in stock um, – Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can find them in stock, and they make a great sublimation printer. Um, and they do everything you'll want to do, besides 24 inch printing at 6.99. So it's not a bad printer. All right, next up, we're going to talk about the uh, the Sawgrass printers, and these are a very interesting printer because uh, they have their own brand of ink, Sawgrass ink, and they're pretty much plug and play. They're they're the simplest of the printers. You just there's no adding different ink. There's no cartridges to mess with. You literally just plug the ink in. The ink lasts forever and they just go. And they're one of the easiest ways to get started in sublimation if you don't know anything else about it and don't don't care to convert or mess with chipless firmware or any of that. You can get a sawgrass printer and be running in just a couple minutes. Um, and this one is the SG500, which if you're just printing small things, it, it'll do up to a 8.5 by 14. Which, which isn't impressive given the price point, but, it, I mean, it, it's more of a workhorse machine. It's more of a commercial-grade unit. Um, they also have the SG-1000, which is a little more expensive at around $1,700 on the, uh, if you get the starter. Now, if you go ahead and get the uh, the paper size that does 13 by 19 with the bypass tray, that increases the, the price up to uh, around $1,800. But having 13 by 19 is worth every penny of it. And once again, this is a a workhorse of a printer uh, that you're getting. But you'll need to use Sawgrass inks, and you'll you'll pretty much be in that in that product line. Next up, we're going to talk about some of the big boys, which is the uh, like the Epson the Epson dedicated die sub printers, the uh, SureColor F570, which is a 24 inch die sub printer, uh, runs off Epson sublimation ink. Um, and it's, it's a real workhorse that does 24 inch roll, roll paper. And, and you, you can, you can usually find these in stock, like they're in stock right now and, and you can find them as low as $2,400, but this is a really good workhorse printer. And if, if you're lucky enough to be able to afford one and, and have a use for it, it's, it's a fantastic way to do it. 
Now, if you decide that you want something a little bit bigger even, um, this is where you start to break into the uh, the big Epsons and the big Mamakis. My choice between the, the big Epson and big Mamaki would be the Mamaki. Um, I've had some experience with Mamaki printers, mainly like a JV4, JV33. And the newer, the newest one is the TS100-1600. I think this is a 64-inch printer. This dedicated die sub, and it comes in about right at 10 grand for what you're looking for. And it, it is a big, fast printer um, that has like a, it, it's a roll printer that has like a take up utility where it'll just sit there and you can just print, you can just print it all night and you can just, just sub everything the next day. And that's what it's designed for. It's designed for, uh, for very high volume shops. And I mean, it, it's a solid, solid unit. You can look at this on uh, the Maki USA website. And Epson's version of this is the SureColor F7200. It's the 64 inch and it has a uh, soft rip, which is the, the rip software that it uses to kind of batch the jobs and put them all together and all that good stuff. And Mamaki has, uh, what is it called? Rasterlink. And Rasterlink, you uh, you basically import your files and it'll, it'll figure out where to put them on the paper where they'll all fit. And then you can just mass rip it and send it to the printer all at once. Pretty cool stuff. Um, but yeah, these are the big, huge workhorses. Uh, more expensive print heads, possibly more expensive ink, but overall, they, I mean, they just, they just, they're designed for high, high volume printing. So with all those out of the way, all right, guys, we can go ahead and move on to the, uh, to the bad printers. All right, next up, guys, we're going to get into the bad printers. Um, these are printers that I don't really recommend uh, for various reasons. So the first one is the Epson SureColor F170. And at first glance, it's a nice printer. It's a dedicated die sub printer from Epson. takes Epson inks. Uh, it has a factory profile and all that, so your colors will be perfect right out of the box. So, I mean, it's a good plug-and-play system. However, it only does 8.5 by 11, 8.5 by 14 for 400 bucks, which is kind of high. That's right up there in the Sawgrass territory, and overall, it's 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 a tough sale. It's not that it's a bad printer; it's just it, it's a little expensive. If it was a two ninety nine printer, maybe, but at four hundred dollars, it's a it, it's a no go for me. And even worse of an option. <laughs> now this one, this one's a doozy. I don't know why they make this. It's the Epson EcoTank ET eighty five hundred, not to be confused with the AT, uh the ET eighty five fifty, which is a phenomenal printer and does thirteen by nineteen. But this little guy, this little poor guy, only does eight and a half by eleven. It's a little tiny printer, and it's five ninety nine, and you have to have all six colors for it. You have to have photo black, photo gray, so it, it takes all this ink and only prints eight and a half by eleven, eight and a half by. I don't even know if it prints eight and a half by fourteen. But and it's a little tiny guy, and it's six hundred dollars, and and you absolutely can get a sawgrass that does more. That's a dedicated, warranted sublimation printer for cheaper. So uh, this is probably the worst buy in sublimation printers. I mean, this is this is a bad one for five ninety nine. Absolutely, do not recommend. Next up are the uh, the Epson Workforce seventy three tens, which on paper, if it's if it wasn't for the one fatal flaw, it would be perfect. Because it's it's an Epson newer printer that you can find in stock that has a precision core technology, and it does thirteen by nineteen. However, the the cartridges that it uses uses those very special chips that you have to change the chip each time that you uh, that you that you fill up the ink, and that that greatly increases your uh, your operating cost, and that puts it a little out of the ball game in my opinion. Which I mean, it's still it's still not a horrible deal. I mean, if you're somebody that doesn't use it that often, it may it may actually be worth it. Um, so this one, it's not that it's a bad printer. It's just a, it's just that that ki that kills it for a lot of people that use it a lot, because anytime you fill up ink, it practically doubles your ink cost, just because you have to get those silly chips each time. Now, if someone happens to crack the code and make a chipless firmware for this guy, then my goodness, that then all bets are off, and it becomes one of the best values. It probably would be the best value in sublimation printers if that were the case, but so far it's not, and I don't see where anybody's working on it. And this goes almost identical for the uh, for the for the 7820s and 7840s, which they're a little bit higher. They're about a hundred bucks higher, uh, but otherwise they do everything that the uh, 
the little uh, 7310 does and includes all the like the faxes and all that good stuff. Fax or fax scan, all that good stuff. And they're really easy to find. They're usually in stock everywhere. But those chips make it a, a, a no bueno for me. So what should you get? All right, this is just one man's opinion. If you're on a budget and an eight and a half by 11, eight and a half by 14 printer is all you'll ever need, uh, then you can safely get by with a, a WF uh, 2830, 2860, or if you want to go the EcoTank route, an ET2800. Um, all these printers will do everything you'll need. You'll just need to, in the case of the EcoTank, you'll just need to put the correct ink in, the sub sublimation ink. In the case of the workforce printers, you'll need to do uh, probably the chipless firmware, and you'll have to supply your own cartridges, which you can get those on, on Cosmos Inc. website. You just select the printer model, and, and it'll hook you up. And you just put the sublimation ink in and convert it, and you'll be good to go. Next up, um, if you're needing something 13 by 19, and you have a little time on your hands and you can, you'd like to tinker with things, there's nothing wrong if you can find it with a 7710 or a 7720 printer. Um, they're hard to find. They're almost extinct. And they give some people a little bit of trouble. Um, so the reliability might be questionable at times. I've had no problems with mine. And they, they'll do up to a 13 by 19. Again, that's the 7710 and 7720. And you can just put do the chipless firmware. And you can do the ink cartridges and die sub ink. And they'll be good to go for, for probably a couple of years. No, not, not a big deal at all. Uh, you can do the same thing with the XP 15,000, which is a little easier to find in stock. It's a little more expensive. Um, but you can also do chipless firmware, uh, printer cartridges on those. And it also does a 13 by 19. If you're looking for the next step up, um, in my opinion, that's the ET, the 15,000, the big eco tank that does 13 by 19. And that's the, that's the ultimate, uh, printer for die sub in my opinion, because it does everything. It does 13 by 19. It does 11 by 17. Eight and a half by eleven, eight and a half by fourteen. You don't have to mess with cartridges. You don't have to mess with chipless firmware. You literally put your sub ink in and go. And it's really that simple. Same thing with the uh, the eighty five fifty. It also does uh, thirteen by nineteen. It's a little bit higher, but they are easier to find. And they did these have six colors. They have the photo black and I think photo gray. Um, if you're if you're wanting something that's more turnkey that you can just plug in and go, there's a Sawgrass the SG five hundred. And also the SG-1000. And the, the SG-1000 will do 13 by 19 if you get the bypass tray for the SG-800. Which you can still find those in stock. Um, pretty much anywhere that does Sawgrass stuff will have those in stock. And again, that's the Sawgrass bundles. Um, the SG-500 is a little high. for I mean, it, it only does 8.5 by 11, 8.5 by 14. And it's a $600 printer. So it's it's hard to justify that. Um, almost same with the SG-1000. It's an $1,800 printer that does uh 13 by 19, 11 by 17, and the, you know, the eight and a half by eight and a half by 14. It'll do pretty much everything you want for $1,800. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a tough recommend, but if you're somebody that wants to have something turnkey and, and the money isn't a problem, that's, it's a good solution. Now, next up, if you're needing something a little bit bigger than that, the Epson SureColor, um, S570 is what you're after. Uh, for just a little bit more than that, uh, that Sawgrass 1000, you can get the 24 inch 570, and you can find these for about 2400 bucks. And that is a 24 inch roll printer uh, that does the uh, the die sublimation paper on rolls, and that'll do pretty much anything you'll ever want. Um, and if you need something even bigger, the Mamaki might be your way to go for around 10 grand, or you can get the Epson the uh, the Epson model that's around 13 grand and that's a 64 inch roll printer uh that does it's made for made for very high volume printing and that might be your ticket and if you're at that level you know you're at that level so then that that should take care of everything guys um so if you found this video helpful and hopefully you did uh feel free to give it a big old thumbs up like subscribe to the channel and guys i appreciate it and let me know in the comments uh comment section below what you think about this video um anyways i can improve anything i may have gotten wrong and and we'll go ahead and just uh we'll go from there so all right guys i appreciate it and have a good one